I was told to keep it under 60 seconds. I can do it in 30. You just have to listen. There are those who walk among us, going unnoticed through the glaring difference. They percolate radiance, which is only perceptible in their outcomes. They may be the quietest in the room or the most flamboyant. They are directed by their hearts alone, seldom explaining why. Steely Dan and the Beastie Boys wrote about them, and maybe George Harrison was one. I speak of bodhisattvas. No one knows, by definition, how many might be here living in Long Beach. Never look for one, as they are, by commitment, undetectable. As I close, but as close as I have known, this woman dances the dance of Kuan Yin, threading the world with silent love. We are all fortunate to live in Jan's protection, to find sanctuary in her heart and take refuge in her sacred resistance. I want to be the first to say tonight, thank you, Jan Seymour Ford. We are safer, we are kinder, we are quieter, we are braver for knowing you. Thank you, Zoe. When I was a schoolgirl, every day the class would stand up and recite the Pledge of Allegiance. The final words are, with liberty and justice for all. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that a noble ideal? I was born in 1951, the heart of the Jim Crow era. Even as we children stood together and recited those idealistic words, our nation had a policy of systematically and deliberately denying liberty and justice to its inhabitants. I graduated from high school in 1968. What a tumultuous year. Bobby Kennedy and, and Martin Luther King were assassinated. Feminists spoke out against patriarchal oppression. The Democratic National Convention in Chicago was a radicalizing event. I went to UCLA. I sat in the free speech area, and I listened to the many voices calling for liberty and justice for all. The contrast between our ideals and the harsh reality broke my heart. 50 years later, it's still broken. I'm a Buddhist. In my, livelihood, I, I, in my work life, I strove to find right livelihood, work that supports the health and dignity of people and the earth. I worked for peace organizations and in the print printing trade. Eventually, I went back to school. I got my library science degree, and I became a librarian. In 2015, I retired, and I moved from the East Coast back here to the, the, the West Coast to be near family. Because I want a city, a nation, and a society that guarantees liberty and justice for all, because we aren't anywhere near there yet, because I now have time, and because I can, I owe my labor to making it so. I'm a workhorse. I need to pull a plow. I found my plows at my congregation, the Unitarian Universalist Church here in Long Beach, and in the community with the Sanctuary Long Beach Coalition. At my congregation, I work with wonderful people on the racial justice team. In the Sanctuary Coalition, I support the work of committed young activists. I'm what you call a white ally. This means we understand that when a community is marginalized and targeted, the leaders in the resistance arise from the oppressed community. We allies support them, we show up, and we do the work that needs to be done. The main discipline here is being useful and mostly keeping our mouths shut. <laughs> I'm grateful for the support of partners. With Anne Burdett 
and with a lot of support from the Greater Long Beach Interfaith Community Organization, ICO, we call it, and Clergy and Laity United for Economic Justice, we organized an interfaith network of allies for sanctuary work, the Long Beach Sacred Resistance. As a nation, we still haven't delivered on the promise of liberty and justice for all. Working to make it real is simply what I owe, and I'm grateful for the wonderful companions I'm fortunate to work alongside. This is a magnet from my refrigerator. It's a, it's a picture of Dolores Huerta, one of my heroes. She's holding up a sign that says, Si sí, se puede, yes, we can. Every day, my companions in this work remind me of this truth. Yes, we can. Thank you. <laughs>